Good day, students. Welcome back to Accounting 1329, Payroll and Business Tax Accounting. This is Dr. Mercado speaking. In this lecture, we are going to be continuing covering Chapter 4, which deals with income tax withholding. Okay. In this particular lecture, we are going to be covering problem 411A. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into the problem. But before I jump into the problem, just remember some general announcements to please read the chapter, review your PowerPoints, review any lectures posted on Blackboard, review any of the show me how videos embedded in your homework, and then you can work on your homework and your quiz. Okay. Please schedule your time accordingly to ensure that you complete all of your assignments. Remember, you have Monday through Sunday to complete your weekly assignments. Um, that way you don't uh, miss out on any of your assignments and you get to complete your assignments by the established due date. Okay. So let's jump over to problem 411A. Okay. So here we have George Clausen. He's age 48 and he is employed by Klein Company and is paid an annual salary of 42640 he has just decided to join the company's simple retirement account, IRA form, and asked a few questions. We have to answer the following for Clausen. Okay? So the first question that we have here is what is the maximum that can he contribute into his retirement fund? Okay? Now, I'm going to bring over the section. If we go over to section 4.2, it talks about tax deferred retirement accounts. It, go, it goes over the different retirement accounts. In this particular problem, we are looking at the simple retirement account, which is the last category, the simple plans. Okay. But let's quickly go over some of the information. Okay. So what does it say about tax deferred retirement accounts? Mm -hmm. So it basically states that these types of accounts allow employees to contribute amounts from their wages into retirement accounts. These contributions reduce the amount of the employee's wages that are subject to federal income tax. These tax deferred plans set limits on the amounts that employees can contribute tax free and also provide for additional contributions to be made into the accounts by the employers. Upon retirement, the employees will receive their contribution bank back in the form of regular payments from their retirement accounts. These payments are then subject to federal income tax. So at the point that we are contributing money into our retirement accounts, that money that we are contributing is not taxable for federal income tax purposes only. Only for federal income tax purposes, okay? Those payments are taxed at the moment that you make the withdrawals once you retire. Okay, that's what it says here. These payments are then subject to federal income tax once you get your retirement payments, okay? The advantage of tax deferred retirement accounts is that the taxpayer may, may be in a lower tax bracket when the income is taxed. Okay, So they're assuming that by the time that you retire, you're going to have less income than what you currently have. Thus, you're going to be in a lower tax bracket paying less federal income tax. So currently, any money that you put into your uh, retirement account is not going to be taxed for federal income tax purposes. Okay, So the problem is asking what is the maximum that he can contribute into his retirement fund. Okay. In the book, you are provided with figure 4.3 and it gives you the breakdown. We have 401k, 403b, and 457b and the different amounts. And then we have the simple retirement. Okay. Our problem uh, deals with simple retirement accounts. So what is the maximum that can be put into the simple retirement fund? So we're going to focus down here on simple. And right here it says that the maximum the employee deferred contribution can be per year is $14,000. Okay, That is the maximum that an employee can put into their simple retirement account. So the answer for question number one is $14,000. What is the maximum that can be contributed into his retirement fund? Fourteen dollars Now, uh, the next question asks, um, what would be the company's contribution? Okay, so if we look down here, it says uh, after you turn 50 or once you reach 50 or older, you can put in an extra $3,000. So that would take you up to 17, but you have to be 50 or over. In this case, George is 48. So George can only contribute 14 grand at this moment. Okay, and then below that, it says that the employer must match the employee's contribution up to this amount of 3% of the pay. Okay. So uh, that is the amount that uh, Klein can contribute into the account, okay? 3%, okay? 
Okay. Klein's company's contribution would be 3%. Okay. So if we get the uh, annual salary of 42,640 times 3%, that would give me the maximum. The company contributions will be will be 1279.20. So how did I calculate that? I get my annual salary of 42,640 and the maximum contribution is 3%. So that will give me 1279.20, okay? So that is the amount that the company would contribute, okay? So it says here that the employer must match the employee's contribution up to this amount, 3% of the pay. So you get the pay times 3% and it'll give you the amount, okay? Now letter C is a little bit tricky, okay? It's asking you what would be his weekly take home pay with the retirement contribution deducted, so we are assuming that Klein, uh, that I'm sorry, that George is participating in the retirement contribution. So we're going to figure out how much would he take home after the retirement contribution. He is married, filing jointly, uh, using a wage bracket method and a 2.3% state income tax on the total wages. Okay. So in order for us to figure that out, we have several factors. The first thing we need to do is figure out the weekly pay. How much does uh, and I'm going to do some calculations in there, so I'm going to like maybe do the data there, okay? So, the weekly pay. How do we calculate the weekly pay? Well, I know that uh, George gets paid $42,640. i am going to divide that by 52 weeks. We have 52 weeks in a year, okay? So, that is going to give me, let's see what that gives me. So we're going to get the annual salary of 42,640 divided by 52 weeks. So that means that every week, uh, George gets paid $820. Okay. From those $820, okay, we have to deduct the FICA OASDI. The FICA OASDI is the weekly pay, which is the 820 times 6.2%. Okay. By now, we should already know these percentages. We've been uh, covering them uh, every week um, in our problems, so we should be very comfortable and familiar with the different rates. Okay, so we're gonna get 820 times 6.2 percent. That's gonna give me fifty dollars and eighty-four cents. So this is a deduction. Okay. I'm going to deduct 50.84 for, let me put that in parentheses. Okay, there we go. Okay. And um, let me just sort this. There we go. Okay. So we have FICA OASDI, then we have FICA HI. We're going to get the entire amount of the weekly pay times 1.45%. Okay. So let's see what we get for HI. 820 times 1.45 percent that gives me 1189 okay and this will also be a deduction because we're taking it out of the employee's paycheck okay so we have FICA OASDI FICA HI we've got state income tax and the state income tax rate was uh, 2.3 percent that was provided in the problem 2.3 percent so we're gonna get the 820 dollars times the 2.3 percent and let's see what we get so 820 times 2.3 percent that gives me 1886 so we're gonna deduct that okay uh, we're also going to deduct the retirement contribution. Okay. Now, um, here, remember, we've got the maximum that he can put in is 14000 We calculated that in letter A. So, the annual contribution is 14000 and I'm going to divide by 52 weeks. Okay. That's going to give me the weekly contribution. Okay. So, 14000 is the maximum you can put in. I'm going to divide it by 52 weeks. So that means that every week I'm going to deduct $269.23 to go into the simple retirement account. Okay? 269.23. A 
let me see, did I get that number right? 269.23, yes, okay. And then last but not least, we have our federal income tax, okay. Now for federal income tax, remember the retirement contribution is not taxable. So I'm going to get my $820, which is my weekly pay, and I'm going to subtract my retirement contribution, which is $269.23, okay. That is going to give me 820 minus 269.23. 269 that means that $550.77 is taxable. Okay. That is my taxable earnings for that particular week. Now this employee gets paid weekly and this employee is married. It says here, married filing jointly. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our tax brackets, okay? And we're looking at the weekly payroll, okay? And we're gonna locate the uh, amount, which is the 550.77. So 550 falls between 545 and 555. We are using the married filing joint section. So we're gonna go to the first section. And if we run our numbers down, that number would be a five. So we're going to get withhold $5 for married filing jointly, and the amount is $550.77. That runs between $545 and $555. So the amount of my withholding will be $5. Okay. We are using the wage bracket tables. Tax table B at the end of your book. Okay. At the end of your ebook. Okay. Just make sure that you look at the correct payrolls. Okay. This is weekly, married. Filing jointly, we locate the amount, the bracket that's in, and that gave me a $5. So that is how I got my $5 from my table, okay? So that is $5, okay? Now I can calculate my take-home pay. So your take-home pay is basically going to be your 820 minus... 5084 minus 1189 minus 1886 minus 269.23, that's your contribution into your retirement account, minus $5 for the federal income tax withholding. That means you're going to take home 464.18. Okay, that is your take home pay. So you're making $820 and you're only taking home $464.18. Okay. So the amount that you're taking home is 464.18 if you decide to contribute the maximum amount into your simple retirement account, okay? So that is letter C, okay? Now letter D says, okay, what would be his weekly take home pay without the retirement contribution, okay? So without the retirement contribution. So I'm just going to copy and paste this data, okay? The top section is the same, okay? I'm just going to copy and paste because the weekly pay stays the same. He's still going to get paid $820. He still has to pay OASDI taxes of $820, $820 that's 6.2%, okay? He also has to pay HI on the $820, that gives me $1189. He also has to pay, uh, pay in state income tax, so that does not change. Now what's going to change is the retirement contribution, okay? We are not contributing into the retirement contribution. And what happened here? I think I overlapped. Okay, let me see. Oh, no, I was good. Okay, there we go. Letter D. Okay. So the only thing we don't have is in this particular scenario, what would his weekly take home pay be without the retirement contribution? So now we're going to take out the retirement contribution and we're going to go and figure out our federal income tax on the $820. Okay, so now we're going to do the entire amount of the contribution of $820. So we're going to go back to our tables and we're going to locate $820. Okay, so the amount for $820 is in this bracket right here, okay? If you see, it's between 815 and 825, married finally jointly, my withholding is $32, okay? 
So that is the amount that we're going to get withhold it, $32. And we're getting that number from our table, okay, weekly. And we're going to locate the amount using married filing jointly. And that is going to give me the bracket of 815 to 825. That is a $32 withholding, okay. Now that we have that withholding, we can calculate the take-home pay. The take-home pay is basically going to be your 820 minus your 5084 minus your 1189 minus your 1886 1886 minus your 32. That gives me 70641. Okay, so if the employee decides to contribute into the simple retirement account, he would make $820 a week, less all of the deductions, he would be taking home $464.18. If the employee opts to not participate into the uh, retirement account, he would get paid $820 and would be taking home $706.41. Okay? The only thing that changes is the federal income tax. In the top portion, he's paying federal income tax on $550.77. That is because the amount of the retirement contribution is not taxable for federal income tax purposes. In the second portion, because he is not contributing into any retirement account, the entire amount would be taxable. The whole 820 will be taxable for federal income tax purposes. Therefore, the federal income tax withholding would be higher at $32. Okay, So those are the differences between the scenario where he contributes and the scenario where he does not contribute. In the first part, he's going to get deducted the amount that he's going to be putting into the retirement. Um, in the second part, he won't have that deduction included. Okay? Please make sure that you read over all of the section that deals with tax deferred retirement accounts. You qu quickly analyze that information before you're working on the problem. Okay? And you work out your problem in steps. That way you clearly understand what is it that you need to do. Okay? So those are all of the requirements for problem 411A. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, please look over your syllabus for my scheduled office hours. Um, and that is it for this lecture. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.